All right, everybody. Now, hello. Let me begin with that. That was a pretty cool Medal of Honor run, wasn't it? My name's Growth Kazi. You might have seen my first run I did on the, you know, this marathon, Turok 1. Now we're tackling Turok 2, which is, uh, well, I don't know if I want to say it's better or worse. I can hear myself. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Countdown. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right. So, Turok 2 is a direct sequel to Turok 1. We play another Turok. We don't play the godly Turok you saw in Turok 1 at all. This is actually the guy that, like, uh, he learned everything how to do things, and he does it way worse. Like, his voice is worse, his way of handling... It's an excellent port, I think. And there's quite a few changes in this one compared to the original. First and foremost... Oh, track. I'm so sorry. <laughs> First of all, they took away the aim assist in this game. Uh, so I actually have to aim myself, which can be bad in many areas. Uh, in the original, you had literally auto-aim, so you could aim anywhere and hit them in the head, pretty much. But I, I actually have to aim, which is really bad. <laughs> the, another mechanic they introduced in this game that isn't in the original is ledge grabbing. And basically, every time we hug a ledge, Tarok will grab it, hopefully. Sometimes he doesn't, because he's Joshua. He's pretty bad. Now what you saw me do there was a quick save and a quick load. When you do quick saves and quick loads in this game, um, you actually deactivate some triggers, I do believe. Some collision triggers. So doors, normally when they open, you can't go through them until the animation is done. But if you do a quick load, or a quick save slash quick load, the collision just disappears for whatever reason. And you can walk straight through it before it has finished. Like that. Oh, I missed! Right, so this first level um, has the be one of the best songs in the game, by the way, so that makes resets in this game quite good. There's not a lot of tricks in this game that'll actually kill the run. Like, at all. There are a few jumps that are very nasty and make you lose time, but not more than that. Then we're gonna rescue our first child here. No, our second child, that is. So we're just gonna open the cage, hug them, and then leave them. Because that's what we do. Um, you know. We don't bring them with us or anything. So now, we have rescued two children. We have activated, I think, every distress beacon. I'm not sure. I forget. <laughs> Also, the way this game works is, if you haven't completed every single objective in the level, it's not gonna let you leave the level. Well, that's how it was in the original anyway, because this remastered uh, actually implemented a new mechanic where at the checkpoints you can actually work between other checkpoints. This means, if I activate a checkpoint in this level, you know, and then I have activated another checkpoint in another level, I can work between the two. Uh, making me able to skip making or doing all the objectives in every level So this secret here down here, I'm gonna do the quick save slash quick load again That would remove some of the load times in here or not load times the collision triggers And I'm gonna go through here 
Yes, I just walked on air. I mean, this Turok is not as good as Tal said, but he's, he's decent. And we're gonna give this child PTSD by just rescuing him and then, you know, jumping off a cliff, because why not? I know, right? Rescuing children is really weird. I am saying the raptors won't take care of the good uh, children. I don't know about you, but they were the ones who put them in the cages in the first place, and that's not proper parenting, if you ask me. Right, up here we're gonna walk on an invisible bridge. Right here. Not sure why that works, but some triggers in this game, if you jump where um, there's supposed to be bridges and stuff, the game is like, oh wait, he's there? But that means the, the bridge must have been triggered, right? And so like, you can still walk there. It's like the collision loads. Whoa, we got through the tunnel. That's pretty good. All right, now we're gonna rescue the last child in the stage. So we're gonna jump on an invisible wall, ledge grab it, do a walk off jump that is also in this game. Uh, for those of you that saw the Turok 1 run earlier, you know that I did a lot of mid-air jumps, meaning I run off a ledge so Turok would, you know, fall down, but I still have a small time window in the air where I can press jump again and I'll perform a second jump mid-air. This is very useful and will help us skip a lot of things later on. This inducing childhood trauma also mechanic, yes! Yes it is, because this Turok is worse. Oh. Alright, now we're gonna get to the last key of the level. We're gonna hit a trigger through the wall there. And we're gonna pr uh, proceed with leaving and go to the exit. Now since this is any percent, we're actually gonna skip every single boss fight except for the last one. Uh, Simply because the others aren't needed, thanks to the new mechanic that allows you to warp between levels. In the original, since you can't do, couldn't do that, you had to face a boss at the end of a lot of levels. But, you know, since we're not exiting anymore, we won't even get to see them. These guys are going ham on me, but that's fine. Now, something you might notice here in this run is that sometimes Turok will be super fat. Oh, I missed. Super fast, and sometimes he'll be super slow. <laughs> so there's a weird little thing we call speed boost in this game. Um, they happen randomly, and all they do is just speed up the game by a lot. Um, it's like it lags for a bit, and then the game is in super speed for a while, and then it just goes back to normal. We have no idea why this happens. So, right now it's just down to luck. The current theory is that um, when the game drops frames, as a compensation, when it goes back to normal, it increases the speed of the game. Also guys, notice how the title of this game isn't uh, Dinosaur Hunter. They finally realized that Turok hunts everything, so they just named it something that isn't very relevant, I'd say, at all to the title, or to the game. There are no seeds in this game, and they are not evil as far as I can tell. Now, so first we have the random speed boosts, right? Enemy patterns in this game are also random. Like, you're always gonna have the same spawns, but they're gonna behave differently every time. So this is basically random the game. This section is called the totem defense section. This is the only one we're gonna be doing in the game. In 100% you would do this at the end of every level that has a totem. And then fight a boss. What you do here is basically defend it by killing a certain amount of enemies. Like that. And you're done. So this is the hub that we're entering now. I just activated a checkpoint over there. Um, we're gonna use that to warp later. And I also did the quick save slash quick load in order to open up the doors faster. The death marshes. Now, we're at just like Turok 1, we're doing them out of order, so we're doing level 3 after level 1. This is the, de uh, the death marshes. Very straightforward level. 
This is cutscene. Unfortunately. This game has a lot of those. Mentioned that we're playing with the PC uh, soundtrack. The remaster uh, allows you to choose if you want to listen to the N64. We're playing with the PC soundtrack, meaning this song in this level is gonna go bonkers at one point. It's like the composer died in the middle of it. You're gonna hear it. You're also gonna hear a lot of guys shout at Tarok and be like, Hey, over here! Because they want us to rescue them. Normally in this level, what you have to do is soldiers and blow up three ammunition storages. Just like she said. But we don't do that. We don't need to. Alright. Let's go. So, Death Marches. This is the home of the mighty Perlin. The... Like the green creatures you saw here and in Turok 1. Fun fact, these creatures are known for being dumb. There's a cool weapon later that we're not gonna use. Called the Cerebral Boar. I'm sure some of you know of it. That attacks enemies based on their like intelligence, their brainwaves. You cannot kill these creatures with that because they're simply too dumb. And that is lore. Oh no, I fell into the goop. Here we go. So at the start here, you can actually do a series of water jumps if you're really cool. This is not cool. What is happening? That is weird. That happens sometimes in the green goop. There's like these weird invisible walls in the water. I, don't, I can't really call it water in the goop. And I'm not really sure what they're for, but they're there. And when you get into one of them, uh, you're screwed. <laughs> Luckily, I managed to save us there. So this is the first key of the level. There's also a grenade launcher you can pick up here, but uh, we're not gonna get that. We don't need it. Instead, we're gonna get this, the Mag-60. Weapon I'm currently using. Awesome weapon. So the way they uh, chose to do weapons in Turok 2 is... You have certain types of weapons, and there's always like two types of every weapon. So for example, there's two shotguns, there's two pistols, there's two sniper rifles, etc. Except there's not really a, a sniper in this game. Well, I guess kind of. There's also two bows! So now, all we're doing right now is going to the end of the level, because that's where all the good stuff are. Like the keys and whatever. Isn't this music majestic, guys? And that's a little skip right there called Tower Skip. Normally you're supposed to, like, climb a tower and stuff, but we don't do that because we have the legendary walk-up jump that Turok, or rather, taught us. Because he's the beast. Now, story-wise, while the better Turok in Turok 1 uh, he's cool and all, right? You know, Native American Jesus. He's also responsible for this game even happening, because when he defeated the campaigner, aka the final boss of Turok 1, he took the ultimate weapon and threw it in a volcano, which awakened the prime evil that is in this game. So, thanks to Talsit, we got Turok 2. I'm just gonna snipe those guys to trigger the gate opening here. Hop on right through. And here you can hear them. Of course he didn't want to talk, but they, they shout for you to help them, but we're not gonna do that. We ain't about that life. Now at every level, you can find a feather like this, and then you can bring it to a big purple Kool-Aid man, and he'll give you magic spells that will help us later in the game. We're gonna get all of these except for one, because they are required to finish the final level in the game. So we're gonna enter this portal, and give the feather to this man. And you know, the the ending of Turok 1 that I just described to you, what he does, that's actual official lore, no matter how goofy it sounds.
Yup, you got to witness. You got to witness what happens when the composer dies. Oh, cool. We got that jump. No. No. All right, coming up here, we're gonna do a couple of small jumps that saves a lot of time. So we're gonna shoot that guy in the face because he's not nice. We're gonna jump on this rock and miss the jump. Never mind, we're not doing that jump, apparently. <laughs> what would happen normally there is that he ledge grabs up there. But he didn't. And here you have to kill four raptors, but I choose to do it through the wall. I don't have time for this. And that's what happens if you don't complete all the mission objectives and then try to leave. Uh, it'll, the game will basically tell you that you failed and we're gonna have to restart it. But, you know, you can't restart levels when you're trying to go fast, right? We don't. I did it again! <laughs> we don't have time for this. We're gonna leave this level. We don't want to be here anymore. So we're exiting here and jumping into this little portal. And now you're gonna hear or see the female voice you've been hearing. Adon! She's an alien lady. First, we want her to replenish our ammo, and then we're gonna work to the, uh, the hub. And another cutscene is happening now. Every time you enter a cutscene, you're gonna get a mission briefing. Slaughter by the river of souls. The river of souls. Now, these checkpoints, there's like two or three of them in every level. And every time uh, you enter, you can choose to refill both your health and your ammo. In the original version of the game, you only had one of these refills in every level, made it hard, which made it a <clears throat> But in this game, it's a lot easier. You can refill as much as you want. However, we're only gonna do it at the This is also the second reason as to why Play with this PC soundtrack. The sound, or well, the the song in this level is amazing. I love this song. Oh, you see all of these guys and corpses that we're not gonna see. Your mission objectives are as follows. <laughs> the lip syncing is on point. So you know, we started off with killing dinosaurs that were invading our home time. You know. Nothing too out of the ordinary in terms of a story where a space sci-fi hunter with a bag that has infinite capacity hunts dinosaurs. Nah, I can let that slide. But here, here we have the undead to deal with. We're going into some real necromantic shit here. I don't know if that's an actual word. Right, so starting off this level, casually you take that dinosaur and ride it. Uh, it has rocket launchers on it and machine guns and all that good stuff, but it's faster to walk So we're just doing that I did a quick save slash quick load because just like before uh, the gates collision will go away faster Now that we have the shredder you can see how like all of my shots bounce. We're gonna use that to uh, Activate a lot of switches early on or later because when we shoot this shot, the green one, all of those small little bullets, they can bounce on the uh, switches, triggering them and uh, opening doors for us way before we're actually supposed to open them. This is especially notable or noticeable later on in a level called Lair of the Blind Ones. So Adon told us, you know, to defend the totem. Yeah, uh, we're not doing that. We don't have time for that. Boom, and boom, we gotta kill all these turrets in order for these bridges to go up, that's why I'm shooting them. It's just not for fun or anything like that. So right here I'm gonna demonstrate what we do. If we shoot right down there, the bullets will ricochet on those two switches on the wall there, activating them immediately. That's how broken this weapon is. I should also mention, just like Turok 1, I am running this on an older version of the game. I am not playing this, uh, the latest patch. The latest patch actually uh, completely removed the ability for these to ricochet on switches, making it slower. It kind of sucks, but it's the way it is.
All right, now we're gonna do a little death jump here that I've failed a lot in the past, but not right now. Woo! All right, we're pretty much almost halfway through this level. This is pretty, a pretty fast level. So just like, you know, how if I um, go where a bridge is supposed to be, but it's not, and the game is like, hey, it's over there. Activate the collision. At the same time, bridges that are not activated, like the actual bridge, they lack collision. So I can jump through a lot of obstacles that aren't loaded as well. That's how I could jump through that bridge earlier. Over here, we're just gonna have to activate uh, the two uh, unicorn statues over here by placing these yellow cubes in here. Just like that. Just gonna wait for them to move a bit. And then we're gonna go in here. Now here's our one of our first little like water patches in the game. So there's there's a little weird thing going on with walls underwater. If you're at a wall that has like a hole or whatever in it, and you're holding or you're pressing Turok against it, what happens is you gain a lot of speed automatically just by being close to the wall. I am not sure why that happens, but it happens. So we're gonna do another little trick shot here. And that hit! Nice! So by the time we're up here... The bridge is down! Alright, those of you that play this game might remember how tanky the soul portals are in this game. Like... We have to destroy two soul portals. Not because the, uh, the mission objective requirement says so, but because they're blocking our way. Wait, we're actually just destroying one. I lied. So, this is really tanky unless you make the shot bounce a million times up and down, just like that. Which is pretty cool. Now I'm gonna equip the, uh, the pulse... <clears throat> no, not the pulse rifle, that's Turok 1. This is called, like, I, I don't remember what this one is called. Laser rifle? Ah, whatever. It's green and it's energy. Basically plasma. Oh, we're also Turok! Did you guys hear that? This gun basically one-shots these dinosaurs. They're called dinosaurs. It's a weird name. I know. I know. It's weird. And it also one-shots pretty much every other enemy. Oh, and these little comp raptors? We don't like them, so we kill them. Oh, nice! We got both of those in one shot. That's actually really good. I guys, notice how I'm running faster now? You're witnessing a speed boost that I talked about at the start of this run. A complete random one. And, uh, no. Swinging my little thing here. I don't know what it's called. The claw? Uh, it, it doesn't increase my speed or anything. I just use it to time my swimming. All right, we're actually gonna see some undead now. I don't know what they're doing here. I don't know how they arrived, but they're here. We're gonna do a couple of tricky, well, trick shots. Like that, we gotta kill three zombies to open this gate. And now we gotta kill three big zombies in here. So we shoot there, there, and there. Hopefully that hit all of them. It did. And so we kill the first titty demon right there. That's usually up to luck if those shots actually hit. Sometimes the spawn locations for those things are very, very awkward. But today was fine. Now this guy is invisible and sometimes he blocks your way. He's not a nice person. We do not like him, we shoot him in the face. That's basically what Turok does in lore. If he doesn't like a person, he shoots him in the face. All right, we are at the last section of the level. And what we're doing here is uh, we're gonna go find the feather first and foremost, take it to the purple Kool-Aid man, and he's gonna help us reach the Primogen Key. So the objective for all levels 
in any percent. Um, since we're not completing them by killing bosses or anything, all we're doing is entering the levels, getting the keys and the primogen keys. Because to reach the final boss, you actually have to get all of the six primogen keys. There's no other way to get there. Alright, let's see if we can do this little shot right here. And we can! Nice! Getting that shot early is very good because that door has a pretty long timer. Ow! These things hurt us a lot. Not really. So you just saw the little temple thing there. First and foremost, we gotta find the lock for it, which is here. So now we've unlocked the, uh, the purple Kool-Aid man. Uh, AIDS man. Wow, okay. <laughs> I should just not speak English. Uh, Kool Aid man. We unlocked his lair. We're gonna give him a feather. Very shortly. But first, we gotta go up here, because the last key is up here. I don't think these locks are very efficient, you know, because I just killed them and everything opened. All right, here we go. Take my feather, Kool-Aid man. Give me power. What was that? I can't really hear you. So this patch has some issues with the uh, the voice volumes, pretty much. Uh, you're not gonna hear what a lot of these are saying, especially not Adon or Primogen. Primogen, which is the final boss, he'll say two lines and it'll sound like because we can't hear what he's actually saying. You heard that? I am Turok. It doesn't sound nearly as ferocious as Talset, which is another reason as to why this Turok is lame. And no wonder, in the comics, which this game is like based on, uh, Joshua, the current Turok, is just like this teenage womanizer that's not super badass. Unlike Talset, which is, you know, Papa Turok, pretty much. Primogen key found. And that was the Primogen key! Now we're gonna exit this level. We don't want to be here anymore. We have no reason to be here. <laughs> All right. Back to Port of Adia, the first level. There's quite a lot of backtracking in this game because all of the powers we're getting as we're sacrificing the feathers to the purple Kool-Aid men um, are required in earlier levels to get these things, unfortunately. So we're gonna shoot that guy up there and that guy, which will open this gate and grant us access to a talisman pad. That was the one we just got in level two. So we can get that. That was the last time you're ever gonna hear this music again in this run. I'm sorry. I really am. Alright! Now, we're gonna fill up our ammo and we're gonna go into pretty much the hardest level in the game. Called Hive of the Mantids. It's pretty annoying. But first, we do a quick save, quick load. Activate the Lair of the Blind ones, and then activating this one, so we don't have to do that later. Now, lastly, already made the joke, but if you guys look at these mantids, some of them will be dancing. The thing here that this is actually the rave of the mantids. See how that guy is rocking out to the rave? But Two Rock is here to ruin their day because he's all about that metal. All about that metal. <laughs> also, this room does not look the same here as it does in the actual game. She skipped the line. She was about to say that the I want I I'm going to render the computer useless or whatever, but she was like, ah, no, I'm gonna skip that line and say something else. Locate the energy. Notice how the music disappears. 
Oh! <laughs> it just starts again like that. So first, we gotta break four of these turrets. I messed up really bad. That's actually really bad. And now we're gonna do something we call wall shots. We're gonna crouch and walk. Or we're not gonna do that. We're gonna crouch at walls. <laughs> and then shoot these generators through them. And what happens when we do that is that these, like, force fields disappears from doors completely. So we're pretty much skipping, I'd say, 50% of the level by opening these things way earlier than we should. It's fine, though. It's fine. A lot of these things are just, oh, kill this guy and the door will open, pretty much. I missed that. There we go. So the plasma rifle is extra useful in here because what happens is it one-shots all of the turrets and we're gonna use the explosive shredder for literally everything else because it's... God. It's super good, right? It's super good. That's all we have to say. Oh, yes! We got that. That's a really, really hard thing to do there. And again, I missed it. Eh. I am messing up. So I have to destroy that turret in the air if I want to open this fast. And I did. So we're all Gucci. We're all Gucci. And if I, you know, fail it, I die because I'm not actually seeing where I'm jumping. I could very well jump off the uh, map there. Alright. Now we're just gonna activate these four buttons. Um, you know, just because. Oh wow, there was a dude in the way. Rude. We're gonna kill him for that. See, I'm just running past all these guys, letting them live, and then they just get in my way? Like, come on. Really? So as soon as I walk close to the door there, a uh, little manty dude is gonna spawn, so I just shoot him immediately. Alright. Coming up here, uh, we gotta kill a little manty dude again. I'm just gonna fire that. He dies. Grants his passage. Alright, this is probably the hardest wall shot to make. But we got it. It's all good. So you need explosive shells for that. Well, you don't need it, but you're gonna waste a lot of time if you don't have explosive shells for that one. So, uh, it's very lucky that we had one remaining. That is true. Turok just wants these pesky time travelers to stop meddling. You know? <laughs> Alright. So we're gonna get on here. Shoot this guy. And there's actually a cycle that we're trying to make here. Ooh, I didn't think I was gonna make that. Wanna get on this? Awesome, we made it. So, we're still on really good pace in this level, I'd say. Even though a lot of bad things have happened, it's alright. We're gonna skip this guy, and we're gonna crouch. Uh, not like that. We're gonna crouch here. Shoot a grenade through the wall, because, you know... That's something Talset taught as well, how to actually defy the laws of physics. And stuff. Cool. We activated a war portal and we're gonna get this feather just laying down here for whatever reason. Boom. Alright, now we're gonna go see the Kool-Aid man and then head to the, egg, uh, the end of the stage. This is actually the only level where all of the objectives are at the very end. So we're not gonna see any of the objectives at all. We're not gonna see the supercomputer, and we're not gonna see the embryo, so you're supposed to destroy on this level normally. We could all learn something from Turok, you are very much correct. <clears throat> all right, so now we have the power a flight, pretty much. We're gonna be able to step on talisman pads now, and allow that will allow us to fly. However, we can't control the flight, so it, it's dumb. But you know, it works. All right. 
that's a troll health down there. There's no way to reach that health. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, at all. If you try to go for it, you die. I've tried. All right, we're gonna do some cool little nade shots, and we got the cerebral board. You know, the thing that sends a little missile that goes to their brain, drills into their brain, and then explodes. However, we won't use it. Nope. I'm actually gonna get these. I don't really need them, but I'm taking them for safety. And we're not actually wasting any time by grabbing those explosive shells, because there's a cycle we need to make here. And we got it! Sick. Alright, we're gonna do another one of these wall shots here. Oh man. Oh man. Oh no. That is really bad. As you can probably tell, I took the long way around. Well, we're not making that cycle now! It's fine, we can let these guys shoot us a little bit. That's what I wanted to do. And we're gonna shoot that wall right there, which makes the explosive shell bounce into the room and destroy the thing. Oh, hey, it's here. All right, well, that was good. That was good. All right, so coming up is the, I guess, uh, generator room is what we call this one. You have to destroy a couple of things here uh, with a flamethrower. This is the only time you're gonna get to see this weapon in the run. It's not very cool at all. It just shoots fire. You know, it's an actual flamethrower. As this is turning into mother of screen shakes, you know? We're gonna, we're just gonna hop on this platform, get one of the coolest weapons in the game, which is the scorpion launcher. Kill these two guys, because they're very, uh, rude and blocks their way. And we're gonna go into the trippiest tunnel in the game. Low bitrate uh, is something very bad in this room. If you're in this room with very low bitrate, all you're gonna see is pixels. Now we're gonna blow up their eggs, because we're, we're a douchebag like that. We've had enough of their existence. So we're just gonna... We're just gonna wreck them. Just like that. Also notice how the entire level changed scenery. This is like taken out of Alien or something. Eggs. Brown. Uh, I don't know. Whoa. We're gonna do a couple of cool jumps. And get into the next section. It doesn't launch actual scorpions. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Alright, so in here is where one of the embryos are, but we're not gonna see it. We're just gonna race right past here and proceed to the end of the stage. Oh, there we go. That was the last set of eggs. And now, we're at the end of the stage. Hopefully this one shot here will be enough to kill two. Yup, nice. Now we're done with Hive of the Mantids. It was okay. It was okay. Minus that fall, it was okay. So we're gonna refill our ammo here. And now we're gonna go into a level a lot of people remember, but not because they liked it. Uh, because they hated it. The Lair of the Blind Ones. The Lair of the Blind Ones. This level has a lot of ogres. Yes. Ogres. Little is known of this mysterious race. Legends tell of ghosts. And here they are. They're supposedly to bleed. Man. I can't even say a word correct tonight. Um Basically, they're blind. But they have eyes. I, I'm not sure how this works, but but it's the way it is. They they, they have eyes. It doesn't do anything. And you know, they're a race that actually spawned from underground. They're not from the top side of the world. They should not have eyes. Anyways, in this level there's only one mission objective, and that's that they want me to seal the thermal vents where they're coming from, so we're basically trapping them beneath the ground. All right, let's start on the surface, uh, and we're gonna go here to the left right away. Now this is actually level four. Uh, the level we just did was level five, so normally you'd have to backtrack here, but we don't do that. We ain't about that life. 
this is the power of the feather that the Kool-Aid man gave us in Hive of the Mantids. <laughs> they hear with their eyes, you know. I don't see any ears on them, so, you know, I am starting to think that's correct. Oh yeah, they do some really heavy breathing whenever they're around. They're pretty annoying. On hardcore mode, these guys three-shot you. Um, they're not very pleasant beings. Anyways, we came this way first just to get the primogen key right there. Now you might wonder, all right, all right, we got the key. Why are we still in this level? Well, we have around two more keys in here to find, unfortunately. And we're going to have to go through the entire level to get them. <laughs> never say I see to blind people. You know, I never thought of that. I've probably done that a lot. This place also has a lot of worms and a lot of oversized spiders. Um, so if you are arachnophobic or anything of the kind, I suggest not looking. However, it might be pleasant for you because we are blowing them to pieces with explosive shells. Now right here, I'm going to hug this wall and shoot one of these, you know, ricocheting shells. It will hit two buttons in here because somehow the gun clips through the wall? I don't know. Normally you have to enter two small caverns next to it to fight or uh, to shoot each individual lever. But that takes time and we need to battle that. Alright, here, uh, I did not like doing this segment in harder difficulties of this game. Rocks are falling and it's very random if you're ever gonna get hit by them, but if you do, uh, you take a lot of damage. <laughs> yep, you're gonna see a lot of spider pieces. So in here is normally where you would get the flamethrower the first time. And also, we're doing a sequence break right here. We're too fast for the game, so like you're supposed to get stuck in there as you grab the key and have to fight a lot of enemies. But we're too fast, so the game is like, haha, he's in here, and closes the door, but we're not actually in there. Pretty funny. I am telling you this game has spiders, but no scorpions. You are very much correct. It's awful, I know. However, we do have fire lizards. You're gonna see them shortly. Alright, coming up is probably the most annoying jump in the game. This is called the waterfall jump. Or in some of the runner's eyes, the meme jump. We're gonna have to do a ledge crab here that doesn't always work. But it did first try! Yes, baby! Oh, yeah. I never get that in runs. <laughs> Alright, so here we're gonna skip a little water tunnel section um, by activating a switch up here using explosive shells. And this is something I wish every FPS with water had. Look at this thing. You don't have to swim. Isn't it amazing? And we're just gonna skip right up here with the momentum we get from that thing. And we're gonna jump straight down into the water and just use this. It's it's just amazing. No swimming. Boom. So, there's not a whole lot else to say about this level, in all honesty. We're just gonna keep going. Uh, we're gonna take a left here, because that's the right way. We came, we came there, uh, the room we were just in. You're supposed to plant uh, explosives on the, like, big rock that was hanging. But, you know, we don't do that. We don't do mission objectives here. We're gonna let these guys live. They're not, you know, I, I don't like them that much, but I see no reason to hunt them. So, you know, we got better, bigger things to hunt. All right, guys, I hope none of you have a weak stomach. This is pretty bad, this section right here. 
It's pretty bad. Don't get dizzy, alright? I'm sorry. I did not program this game. Anyway, that section is over. We're entering one of the final sections of this level. Um, we're gonna go down to the lava pit. Now in this level, um, we're actually skipping the feather. Because we don't need the talisman. What it, the talisman does here, it's called a heart of fire. It allows us to walk on lava. But, you know, we're Turok and all that. We're basically Jesus. Not really, but basically. We can not only walk on water, we can walk on lava, too. You have about 1.5 seconds while standing in lava uh, to survive or get out of it. But if you stand in it too long, you die. Simple as. Alright, now we got darker. That's how you know it got more serious. Ooh, spooky. In the original game of Turok 2, you wouldn't be able to see anything in here. Like, the fog would be too dense. Oh, I almost fell off. <laughs> Alright. I mean dick, not dick? What am I saying? I mean thick. <laughs> not dense. Are we, is it called dense? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. I am not an, a native English speaker, so I may say some really funny things every now and then. I do apologize. Alright, so we're at the very last section. We have a little key to find here, some more platforms, and we're done. <laughs> We're gonna get up the scorpion launcher here and kill these dudes. Um, and then we're gonna go in here and blow these up. You know, no biggie. And then blow those spiders up. And in there, uh, the last, like, thermal vent is, but we're not gonna go there. We're gonna let these guys live. Alright, so here there's a little dude up coming. That guy can block us, just like he did. We're gonna get up on the spinny platforms. And this is the last room, pretty much. I'm gonna get those explosive shells, because at the end of this level, uh, lever, this level, we're actually not gonna fill our ammo. There's no need. Boom! Alright, I'm gonna mash enter to skip the box of text that says mission failed. We didn't fail, screw you, game. And we're gonna get out of this level now. That is Lair of the Blind Ones done. We only have one level remaining. Which everybody remembers because it's a huge maze. Just like the final level in Turok 1. So we're warping directly to the hub. Uh, we're gonna do a quick save, quick load to get rid of the uh, collision loading. And we're gonna enter the longest cutscene. The Primogen's light chip. This place is not hard. The only thing you lose time on in this stage is walking into, like, walls. Or enemies blocking you, or them punching you, whatever. So, t I want you guys to really study this ship, right? Notice how big all the corridors and everything in it really are, alright? Th this is going to be important for later, because we're going to do a comparison. By the way, all Adon here is saying here is, Alright, this is his, the final boss light ship. Um, they, it's lo there's lots of robots in here. Uh, they're programmed to wipe out all life if the Primogen dies. Also, this ship is self-sufficient and will make these robots on their own, on its own, and program it on its own. It's it's pretty weird. It's pretty weird, but it's the way it is. Oh, 
also, you're gonna hear Turok go uh, 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 a lot, a lot in this stage. Starting off, uh, the level is divided into four sections. Each section has a button that requires a previous power that we earned from the Kool-Aid men to unlock. And once all four buttons are unlocked, or pressed rather, in the first room that we were in, the big one, uh, a lock will be released and we can get the Primogen key and get out of here. So, this is Sector 1. Very straightforward. All we're doing is following a linear path. Well, yeah, yeah it's kind of linear. We're gonna be performing a ledge grab coming up here. We jump up here. And here. Success. The mission objectives in this level are you need to find four different, like, tower things and put four crystals into each to disable them. Because what we're actually doing here, or what we're supposed to be doing, um, we're supposed to be shutting everything off. Because this is generating the so-called River of Souls. This is what is making it toxic and stuff. I didn't really talk about that, but in level 2, the River of Souls, where we saw the undead, the water there is toxic unless you get the power in Death Marshes. And it's toxic because of the waste that this ship is actually letting out. But we're not gonna save the people over Icy. We are here for Primogen Keys. No more, no less. Boom! Alright, so those little small robot guys on wheels, um, they're actually your biggest threat in here. Not really because they can kill you, more because they will punch you and you'll be sent flying. So they'll punch me out of the, uh, the switches and stuff and it's really annoying. Alright, so that was Sector 1. We're now in Sector 2. And what we're doing here is right to the end, really. Because we can't do the, uh, the, the button in this place. The power needed for the button here is actually located at Section 4. So we're gonna get this one last. But we still need to go to the end of this one. Also, that guy is going ham! this one in order to unlock section 3. All right, now we're gonna enter and sped up in here. Uh, the, the current, I don't, I don't know if I can say current when it comes to wind, but we're getting pushed by the wind basically, and it's working out really well. Making us really speedy, speedy butts. And we're gonna go up here, and we're on the other side, voila! Activate this door. Now, this area is important because in that door to the right, that's where the last button is. But we don't have the power for it. Oh, they're killing each other. Nice. Alright. So this little section over here. Don't really have anything to do here other than jump past a couple of enemies. And shoot some enemies, activate some switches, opening room doors, you know, the cool stuff. That ion capacitor that I just picked up, the blue crystal, that's what you need to pick up uh, in order to disable the towers. Don't punch me! Oh, he did it! I'm gonna activate the third button, or well, I guess the second button, which opens Sector 3. Sector 3 is probably, like, the hardest one. Uh, there's a couple of tricks in here. Not really tricks, but you, your movement needs to be on point. Otherwise, you'll get locked into some areas, and that is never a fun time. But, you know, we Gucci, we Gucci, we got this. We're just gonna jump to the middle, and to the left. Because we have the legendary walk-off jump. Note that these jumps that I'm making here are not, uh, you know... You're not able to do them in the original, like at all. Oh, what am I doing? I jumped the wrong way. Come on, come on, get up there. What? Whoa, what is happening? Oh, it's her right. Oh, it's going too fast. Alright, 
Alright, alright, we got out of the air tunnels. Safe and sound. It's actually possible to get stuck in the fans and die. That has happened before. Now right here, uh, we're gonna press the button that requires this place power. And this is the whispers power, you know, the flying thing. So this removes one of the locks for the primogen key. And we're going straight back. The next upcoming room has some pretty difficult platforming if you want to do it fast. Uh, because if you get stuck inside one of these rooms that I'm going to enter, right here, if you're too slow here, the room, or well, the door will close and you're stuck in there for, uh, I guess, like 10 seconds or something. It's very slow. But we're, we made it just fine, so that's good. Alright, so that was the end of Sector 3. Now we're gonna go to Sector 4, which is the last sector of this level. Oh yeah, you're right! That was the Leap of Faith! That wasn't Whispers. I don't know, my Turok. Alright, over here we're just gonna kill this dude, because he's gonna be blocking our way otherwise. And then we're gonna kill these Squidwards right here. Because they're very rude, they're ugly, I don't like him. Look at that guy. Nobody likes those. And in this room, I gotta go fast. <laughs> like I haven't been a- or, you know. Like that hasn't been a thing in the past. But you really gotta go fast in here because I'm trying to make a cycle. There's an elevator that starts going up and down as soon as I enter the room. And if I'm not fast enough, I'm not gonna catch it. So it should be going up as soon as I get here. Yo, Cool. We made it. I am Tura! So you might notice we have a lot of extra lives. We're gonna use some of them. Or one of them. No, two of them. Soon. Because this Turok, he's a lot more masochistic than Turok in Turok 1. By far. Oh, so we, we gotta ruin the Primogen's the assembly clan. One of them at least. Just to be assholes, you know? Ah! I need that blue laser sub. So we go down here to pick these up because we're gonna use them later on to disable uh, a barrier. Normally, you'd have to collect a lot of these crystals as well and put them in many different locations, which would wreck the Primogen's uh, place. But we're, we ain't about that. We're gonna let the Primogen have his little toy factory. See, if we were Turok from Turok 1, we wouldn't give a crap and we would have just destroyed everything. But now, we're Joshua. We're a bit kinder. A bit more nice. I hope everyone, by the way, is having an amazing day thus far. Today's games on the marathon has been pretty good. And I hope you're enjoying this run too. Alright, so... Now that we have talked to the last Kool-Aid man in the game... We're gonna go ahead and get to the end of the uh, level where we find... A gun that is, well... How should I put it? Pretty useless. <laughs> It's called a PFM layer, and it shoots mobs at once. There it is. So I replaced those red crystals with the blue crystals, which makes the laser go blue, and everybody knows... Alright, we got in here. First try. That's surprising. That tunnel right there sometimes glitches for me. It has weird collision, to say the least. Oh, all right. Come on, ledge grab, ledge grab. Yes, he did as we asked. This is indeed the remastered version of Turok 2. Um, developed by the same guys who made Turok 1. It's available on Steam. Wink, wink, Steam sale, everybody. This game, wink, wink. No, but this remaster is amazing. It is, I, I don't know. It's so much better than the original in my opinion.
All right, so we're now gonna backtrack to sector two because there's still a switch here we could not reach. Now that we have the last power, we can actually reach it. So we're gonna go and do that. And then we're gonna go get the primogen key. Now thankfully in this game, there are no backpacks like in Turok 1. So death warping is actually a very common thing. So you can guess what's coming up based on what I just told you, right? See that little bridge? If we didn't have the talisman, we would not be seeing this bridge. At all. It would be invisible. But we now have the visions talisman and we can see it. Pretty cool. Also, we're gonna kill Turok here. But he respawns, so it's just fine. It is just fine. His duty as Turok is not done yet. So not only are we backtracking, we're also gonna do the sector reversed to get back because you know it's faster and uh, legitimately only reason is that it's faster all right now we're back in the main hall we can go pick up the primogen key that we unlocked by pressing all the buttons there it is which is also apparently a secret area. Um, never knew why that is considered a secret, considering you need it to finish the game. And now, what we're gonna do, we're actually not gonna head straight to a uh, checkpoint. First and foremost, we're gonna get and stand in the bath here, in the lasers, and take a lot of damage. That's a bit much health. I should have stepped in that once more. But we're lowering our health now because we're setting up for a death warp coming up. We are done with light ship completely. The only thing left in the game is to backtrack in two levels and get the primogen keys from there. So we're gonna start off, nope, with the death marches level three. Here, with our newfound rocket missile boost, I don't know what it's called, torpedo launcher, we can go over here. And we don't even have to tap. We can just hold W and it goes fast. Oh, I love this thing. So we're gonna navigate through this little tunnel. Get up here. And now there's a bunch of angry Perlins here because we kind of wrecked their plates earlier. But they're guarding the key. Now we want to get killed here. It's a lot faster than walking back or swimming, I guess. I'm just gonna let them hack it slash a bit. Now we're done with that stage. Now we're gonna go back to Hive of the Mantids and find the Primogen key there. Because this game loves backtracking. So here we are in the breeding grounds. We're gonna equip the grenade launcher. And go down here on this bridge. Because why not? And take a nice bath in what I assume to be their urine. But I don't know. Turok doesn't care. We're gonna jump up here, blow these eggs up, because, you know, why not? And this is a little hidden area where you need the visions thing. You know, the thing we found in the light ship. So hey, yay for more backtracking developers. <laughs> And this is where the last primogen key is. And you know, we're gonna jump off a cliff. Because it's faster. Now all that's left, now that we have all the primogen keys, we're just gonna have to go back to the hub, activate them, and fight the final boss, called the primogen. He looks very ugly. He is complete random. Nobody likes him. Not even me. How may you assist me? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, here we are. Triggering the final cutscene to enter the Primogen's Arena. 
So, remember how I told you guys to study the room? You know, the corridors, the size of it, in the light ship? Now you guys tell me... How in the hell... Did this man... That guy over there... In the DJ booth... You see him... How did he fit... In his own ship? I'm sorry, what was that? Can you repeat that, please, Sir Promogen? I couldn't hear you. I don't know what this guy's problem is. Can't hear him. Alright, so Primogen is very random. He has three phases we have to go through. This is his idle phase, where we can't hurt him, and he'll do, like... Weird stuff, he'll throw bombs at us. Here's one. And then he's gonna send us some, I guess, mosquitoes? Robotic mosquitoes? Ah! <laughs> oh, we're gonna blow them up. Like that. Alright, so for first phase, we have to shoot his antennas. He has four of them. So we shoot his antenna once, and then his head once. And we keep doing that until all of his antennas are done. Like that. And now... Oh no, I missed! And then we shoot another antenna, he's gonna fly up. And we're gonna shoot his head again. And... <laughs> We're just gonna keep repeating this for a while. By the way, currently he's giving us the worst possible luck. He's having five phases instead of four. Or cycles, I should say. Anyways, his antennas are gone. At all. So we're okay with this. Now he's stuck in the air, because he's, he's, he's a big troll. No one likes him. I'm actually gonna use the Firestorm Cannon here, as a save strat. Oh, I don't have to. Never mind. I got more ammo. So the spawns here are completely random, too. So what are you doing now? Normally... He throws bomb. Yeah, he did. This is bad luck. There's a chance he will not throw bombs here, and he will fly out of there immediately and let me kill him. So, getting these bomb spawns you're seeing right now is actually very bad luck. For that, we're gonna blow his arm up. He actually has two arms we have to blow up. A small one and a big one. So that's his little arm blown up. Oh no! Oh no! Oh yes! There we go. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get this for the- Ah! There we go. The little mosquitoes are annoying. Alright, so the last phase is coming up. The next time he lands, that's when I'm gonna kill him, and that's when the time is gonna happen. So be ready with the time. Alright, I'm gonna use the Firestorm Cannon for this. Because I don't have enough shells. Now we're just gonna wait for some more bombs. This is always gonna happen, like, this is scripted. Alright, get ready on the time. Once he lands, I'm gonna shoot him three times, and then he'll be down. But first, we're gonna use this useless weapon, the PFM layer. Alright, get ready. That was the end of Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. The bad ending. Yes, this game actually has two endings. So, in the original game, if you use cheats, 
to beat the game, you would get this ending, and you don't see you get you, you, I can't talk. You don't get to see the primogen get blown up at all. But if you did it 100% without cheating, he would get blown up. We get the same ending as cheaters got back in the day. All right, guys. I have showcased Turok 1 and Turok 2 during this marathon. That was the last run I'm doing for all of this. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. You've all been an amazing audience. I hope this was entertaining. Um, I also hope all of you are going to have a continuous good day. Slash night, depending on where you are. Time zones and all that. I actually don't know what run is up next. But that was it for me. I want to thank everybody as well at the staff for having me. It's been a blast. It is a great marathon. I hope it continues to be great. Again, thank you everybody. My name has been, or I have been Grove Kaze. I am Grove Kaze. Until next time. Bye bye.